The Davis Mountains are in the high elevations within the Chihuahuan Desert. Up at the top of mountain tops, you get the beautiful Honduras of Vine Forest. These cooler areas with wetter conditions support the plants and animals that live here. You start seeing different bird species as you get higher in elevation. It's really special to actually get to see the unique projects that pop up that are really focused on this unique ecosystem. We're gonna have three teams tonight. I really want everybody to be dirty. Um, I want you at the end of this week to have to wash the grit of this experience out of your hair and skin. But I also hope that this week ends with a bunch of, of trekking owls. Have fun. Anybody sees a mountain lion, you win, you win the bingo for the night. <laughs> All right, guys, break it up. Team one, three, one, two. <laughs> My name's Romy Swanson. I'm a wildlife biologist, and we're out here in the Davis Mountains studying owls. The effort here is all to understand how these birds are interacting with these unique ecosystems. The assumption is, is that they're tied to these high elevation forests, but we need to proof that out. We've made some pretty wonderful discoveries in the form of the Northern Sawwed Owl, which we found to not only be here, but also breeding in the Davis Mountains. Rich Kostecki and I came up here one night looking for Sawwed Owls. There's never been a Sawwed Owl observed on the Davis Mountains Preserve. And I can remember that night, we're playing an owl tape and all of a sudden above us, a couple hundred feet, a Northern Sawwed Owl returns a call we both almost dropped everything we were holding. We were just awestruck in that moment. That owl came and perched up right beside us, giving us a 30 minute study of a species that wasn't even well known from Texas. It was right here in front of us, sitting on a branch, profile, calm, serene, and we're all looking at it, taking the images. And that was an incredible experience. It's also the experience that sparked this entire project. What else is there? What else could there be? This truck's nickname is Beast Mode because wherever I need her to go, she goes and she powers through. <laughs> if you're driving the way you're supposed to, you're not really enjoying the views because very quickly you can either fall off the side of a cliff, but if you're sitting in the passenger seat, you're probably enjoying beautiful scenery. We gotta take a look at an area where one of our surveyors found some elf owls. And this will probably represent one of the highest elevation occurrences of elf owls in Texas. We'll take a look around and see if we got any nesting activity, a nest cavity that we can document. We're about to go up Tobe Canyon. We're looking for flammulated sawwed owls and all of the other species that are gonna be there. Owls are not gonna get active anytime soon. It's gorgeous back here though. It gets better. You know, right around dusk and a little after dark, they will. Uh, we'll take it nice and slow. And that's what we'll do. <laughs> this first part always shocks my lungs. Yep. <laughs> You know what my favorite type of person is? Is the one that looks at you and you're sitting there in awe over this huge tree and says, I've seen bigger. <laughs> <laughs> like that guy. I mean, I've been to the redwoods, but. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen bigger. We're up here. It's high elevation. I kind of like the burn. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, we're just like in the thick of it, in the thick of their habitat. The night has started. It's officially Al 30. <laughs> this is a really, really cool spot. Attracts a lot of species. So hopefully we'll see or hear one tonight. So this is just a little portable Bluetooth speaker that I carry with me for calling owls. <laughs> this is Western Screech Owl.
It's closer. We got two now. Yeah. There it is, right there. He's looking around. Oh, his eyes are open. Pretty cool. We've got a western screech owl. See his big, bright yellow eyes. And their call sounds a little like a ball dropping. They have this unique appearance that we're seeing right now. It's got these little tufts that come up. Uh, kind of like a great cat ears. Yeah, like a cat ears. They're cavity nesters. They rely on cavities in trees or woodpecker holes. Oh my God, that bird! That bird is beautiful. All right, one and done. Yeah, we got stunning looks at the western screech owl. I mean, it popped up into a branch. Love everybody and. Uh, Really, really got to spend some quality time with it because it stuck with us for 10, 15, 20 minutes. I'm hoping I'm pointing at the right tree. <laughs> <laughs> the goal for tomorrow is to get you guys on some elf owls and then send another crew deep into the canyon below that to look for all the other species. This island in the sky. It is threatened by warming conditions, drought conditions, not enough rain, which weakens a lot of trees, stresses them out. And at some point, the island is submerged underneath the desert sea and no longer exists. And that could be what happens to some of these species that rely on these upper elevations. There's an elf owl calling from this uh, area in the below the mountain in this wooded area. And uh, we're gonna see if we can key in on it. This is the world's smallest owl and he's only about this big. You know, tiny, tiny, tiny little owl. There it is on that snag right there. We just got the nest cavity. It's in that second dead ponderosa pond right there. So she's calling, or he. Uh, this is a, a pretty incredible observation, I would say. And looks like they're about to fly. There it goes. It's, it's got to be one of the highest nests ever for elf owls in the state of Texas. This is all stuff that happens at night while people are sleeping, normal people. You don't get to see this sort of stuff. And I don't care how many times I see it, every time it happens, it's just as special as the last time. I hope to see that this preserve remains intact this project is creating a foundation that can be built upon by future investigations. Coolest little birds, amazing. It's fun to read about things in field guides, but it's even better when you get to experience it with your own eyes and ears and soul.